This is a WFMY News 2 Sports Special. Friday Football Fever. Here are your hosts, Patrick Wright and Luke Lidden. Folks, it's our favorite time of the week. You made it to Friday. Now you get to talk football for the next three days. And it was a busy night on the high school gridiron. And for the next 15 minutes, we're bringing you some of the area's best action. Let's start in Forsyth County with our Wendy's game of the week as Reagan hosted Glenn. Reagan making the charge downhill and the student section was ready, but so was Glenn. Second quarter, the Bobcats strikes. Stephon Brown swings us over to Braxton Rory, and this young man puts the speed on display. Hardly a hand laid on him as he flies into the end zone for the seven nothing lead. And later, it was more Glenn Brown, this time going over the middle and finds Dayson Razik. And you can say bye to that man. Even Rory, you'll wait a minute. He's loving it as number two makes it in the the end zone and just like that 14 nothing Bobcats but after a muff punt for Glenn Reagan in scoring position from about five yards out Mashayan Powell shedding a few tackles and he's brought down but it's too late at that point as he's in the end zone to cut the gap 14 to 7. Glenn though would pull away big time in the second half putting up 19 points shutting out the Raiders as they now remain undefeated at 7-0 33-7 the final. All right, well, one of the triad's biggest rivalries continued tonight in Kernersville. West Forsyth made the trip to East Forsyth for a big time matchup. Coach was getting the guys ready for this rivalry matchup. A lot of defense early on. AJ Hall keeping it on the read option, but there's KJ Henry bringing him down in the backfield. Then here's East on defense. Mac Duke takes the handoff. Aaron Worthy brings him down for a loss. Then it's East ball again. This time, though, Hall dropping back to pass. It's tipped and picked off by Giovanni Ricciardi. The Titans would turn that into a field goal. More from West Forsyth. They've got the ball again this time. Duke, though, with the gain of 17 yards after a tough run. And more from West. Jamone Wilson, here he is on the sweep, gets around the edge. And you're not going to stop that guy. He goes 25 yards for the score. West wins it 21 to 10. And we still have much more ahead on the Fever. Smith meets up with Dudley while Northern Guilford hosted Eastern Alamance. Highlights of these two and much more coming up next. And if you miss any of the action, you can still catch scores and updates from Triad football games from both your phone and your computer. Just head to Facebook and like us on Triad High School Sports. And on Twitter, we're at hashtag WFMYFFF. And don't go anywhere, folks. You've got a chance to win tickets to Thursday's Panthers game. We'll give you the first clue and puzzle piece in our Panthers. Panthers trivia contest after the break. We'll be right back. Dudley look to get back in the win column tonight against my alma mater, Smith High School. We'll start off with the Panthers. Zarek Rush here taking the handoff out of the backfield. Gets a solid game, but he's eventually brought down. Later on, though, Rush would not be denied. Taking the handoff right up the middle, walking into the end zone to make it 6-0 Dudley. More from the Panthers, this time Richard Monroe rolling out, tosses one up and lays it gently Ooh. in the hands of Michael Wyman there, and he goes in for a 45-yard score. Dudley leads 12-0. In the second quarter, Smith with the ball driving. The fumble ends up in Christopher Stewart's hands, and that right there would result in yet another Dudley and Zarek Rush touchdown, walking around the edge for the score. Dudley wins this big rivalry, 38-6. We keep the pigskin in Greensboro and head to Northern Guilford as the Nighthawks took on Eastern Alamance. And we had a shootout tonight early on. Eastern Alamance's Hayden Men takes it in for six around the side and for the lead. But we had quite a few lead changes later. Northern Guilford's Jacob Leonard heaves it downfield. It's coming at you. And Ford Moser makes the amazing grab, which would lead to this. Justin Julian taking it in for the score. And then believe it or not, we actually had some defense in this matchup. Leonard's pass is going to be picked off by Taquan Whitman. More. Go ahead and catch him if you can. No. No. No one could. That's a pick <laughs> six right there. We can't show you all the highlights, but Northern Guilford wins it 49 to 48 in double OT. What a game with that one was. Yeah, that game much better than that, huh? Uh -huh. Well, we're off to Kushwa Stadium this time for a North Davidson Thomasville showdown. We'll start off with the Black Knights. Josh C. Signano hands off to TJ Boyce. He's not going to get much of a gain here. Thomasville knocking him out just shy of the 30 yard line, but this time he wouldn't be denied. C. Signano tosses it up to Boyce. Who's wide open in the end zone for the score. And folks, it's 41-0 at this point. Thomasville's coach trying to get his guys into it. In the third quarter, they do all they can. Nick Bankhead scrambling to the sideline, tosses it over to Shaheen Walford-Rich, 
who fights ahead for a tough gain all the way to the 30-yard 30, 30 line, but it wouldn't be enough. North Davidson's C. Signano again on fire. Tosses to Jacob LaFleche for the score. Their cheerleaders are celebrating because their guys get the 48-0 shutout. Moving right along, Ragsdale, Ragsdale and Grimsley took the field tonight inside Jamison Stadium. Grimsley ready for this matchup, but it was Ragsdale who really came out to play. Quarterback Devon Boykin scrambling here, buying some time, looking for a wide open receiver, looking for someone, and he finds Trey Good, who's running down the sidelines. You think he might take this all the way to the house, but he can't get away and eventually brought down at the 10 yard line. And later, Ragsdale, Rags. I can't say that word. Ragsdale's <laughs> Malachi Maynes breaks through for the touchdown in the 21 to 6 lead. Grimsley though would battle back. Chris Zealous over to Chris Wiggins, a Chris to Chris connection for 6 to cut it to just an 8 point game, but Maynes just too much madness in for his second score of the night. 34 to 13 your final score Ragsdale on top. All right, and Southwest or Southeast Guilford look to move to 6 and 1 with a win over Southern Alamance. We'll start off in the first quarter with the Falcons. They've got the ball. Ryan Douglas going to pass one to Marcus Thompson. Turns that into an 18-yard gain there. Then three plays later, it's the quarterback keeper, Douglas, fighting across the goal line for the two-yard score. And then they go for two. Trey Love, here he is on the direct snap there. Goes in for the two-point conversion. It's 8-0 Southeast Guilford. Then here comes Southern Alamance. They've got the ball. Larry Williams. He's going to get hit by Trey Love, though, for the six-yard loss. Tough defense there. In the second quarter, after a Chad Stevens interception, Ryan Douglas tosses one up 11 yards to Brent Apple for another touchdown. It's 15-0. At that point, Southeast Guilford rolls 35 to nothing. Let's head back to Alamance County as Graham played host to Bartlett Yancey. We pick it up third quarter tie ball game when Graham's Dominic Spencer, the juke, and the burst of speed, 89 yards for the long, long touchdown and the 13 to six lead. He'll need some oxygen after that one. Bartlett Yancey, they would try to respond and they took some risks at that. The fake punt on fourth down, that's something you do in Madden. Good for 22 yards and the first down. That's so two bold. plays later, that is right there. Two plays later, Chase Johnson fires a quick out to Jacob Scales, moving up the field, but the ball is loose. That's a fumble. Luckily, Hart Maudlin recovers for his squad. But on another fourth down, Johnson, not a first down this time. Sacked by the Graham defense, and they win it easily, 32 to 12. All right, still ahead on the Fever. More scores and highlights from all around the triad, plus a couple of former stars coming up big for NC State. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. It's time for our Aviation Triad Flight of the Night. This one takes us to Eastern Alamance, Northern Guilford. Hayden Mann of Eastern Alamance rolls out and airs it out to Tyson Riley, who brings it in for the touchdown. It's a man to Riley connection for tonight's Aviation Triad Flight of the Night. Now Carver and Walkertown squared off tonight in Forsyth County with both schools looking for their first win of the season. Walkertown trailed 6-0 at the half. And then here they come, the Wolfpack trying to put points on the board. Walkertown's Reggie Green with a tough carry here. Gets a nice gain and the first down. But I promise you, you will not see a crazier play than this all weekend. The snap goes off of Green's shoulder pad. Ball ends up in the end zone. There's a scuffle, I guess. Gets a little weird here. But eventually, Philip Leggett ends up with the ball. And yes, he's going to take this 100 yards for the touchdown and plants the football in the end zone for the score. Carver goes on to win this one for their first win of the season, 22 to eight. I have never seen anything like that ever happen wow. in a high school football game. What a, what a play that was. NC State's win last night over Louisville put the pack at 3-0 in ACC play for the first time since 2000. I know our director, Brad Lowry, just a little excited about that. And the best <laughs> part is there were quite a few triad alums that played a big part in the team win last night. Former Southern Guilford star Reggie Glassbee takes the handoff and his fourth touchdown of the year puts State up 11 in the fourth quarter. Then High Point Central alum Jermaine Pratt sealed the victory with this beautiful pick six. It is just a great sign to see former triad stars showcase their skills on the collegiate level on such a big stage. And now it is time for our Blue Cross Blue Shield drive of the night. Northern Guilford's Jacob Leonard over to Justin Julian for the big gain, putting all the momentum on their side. So later, Leonard hits Ford Moser for the first down, and it's all about moving the chains at this point, which would all be topped off by Leonard. Handing off to Julian, and you guessed it, he's going to go right in the end zone for the touchdown. And that right there is our Blue Cross Blue Shield drive of the night. 
All right, a few other scores from tonight. Eastern Guilford shuts out Asheboro 45 nothing. Davie County tops Reynolds 41 to 13. Then Mount Airy and Western Alamance, they remain unbeaten on the season with big wins at home. And moving right along, Ledford goes on the road and gets the big 48 14 win at Central Davidson. And Mount Tabor beats county rival North Forsyth 50 to 12. All right, well, another week in the books. How about that? How's it fast, feel, man? Huh? It feels good. It feels good. It's going. It's flying by. I can't believe it. But <laughs> if you missed any of tonight's action, head to WFMINews2.com slash HSS to catch all of tonight's highlights online. And we'll see you back here next week.